Okay, I'm just going to give you an insight to how I do my photography, wildlife photography and videography. As you can see, I'm, perhaps if I was doing videos, I may not use this, this particular lens. This is a 500mm. I probably use me uh, 70 to 200. Um, but for when I want to get close to the animals, I'd probably go to the 500 prime. But this is on a road microphone that's called a dead cat and this stops the interference like wind to a good degree not not completely but does a good job um, and the other you don't get so much of distortion in your uh, in your video when you look look back at it perhaps the Nikon P, P900 and the P1000 incredible uh, videography camera but the audio is very um, Pretty ordinary. It's, it's, you know, it's a shame that they don't have a better audio system on them. But as you can see, this is a prime 500mm lens I've got here on the D810. So what I'm actually filming on is the uh, D850. So um, to give you now a few tr tricks when you're actually filming, what I do now, it's not very windy today at all. So just make sure everything's on tight. On a, this is a Niwa tripod, carbon fibre, and the Niwa ball head, which I love. I love ball heads because you can give your um, latitude with your movement of your of your of your lens, so you can straighten it up um, until you you set it, and then you can lock it in, and it'll stay where it is. Um, 500 is brilliant, brilliant. Like if you're filming with this, it's superb. So. Lenses are important too, not just a, a straight prime lens, 500mm, then you've got your telephotos, then you've got your, your landscape lenses, your macro lenses, um, yeah, so to get that unique type of footage you want, or photos, depends on what lens you're using on your body. Now, a little secret with mine, I've, I've got my day pack here, and um, what I'll, I'll show you is... Um, stop that vibration if you just leave the tripod on its own it, when it's windy it will shake and it will shake if it's real windy it will shake anyhow whatever you do but to minimize that you've got a little hook here see the hook and what you can do if you've got your as you can say I've got I've got me um, I've got to be careful here because I've got all this stuff out um, me gloves me hunting gloves on a cold day, as I say, the weather's fining up. The binos. Photography, so it, it's an art in itself when you're filming because, um, or photographing, as I said, they both go hand in hand to, to a degree. And uh, yeah, now what I'll, I'd like to show you, all right, some of the things that, that I may carry in my camera, I'll set this up properly. Oh, a couple of blackies coming over. What I, I do on this is I rotate that around so I've got sturdiness in the front leg and that's pretty that's pretty steady that that is way how you would like your camera to be like that um, make sure you got all your componentry because I'll, I'll just set it up for this make sure you, your shoe on your, for your tripod is tight um, I'll give you a little what this, this lens does if you want to do portrait stuff I can um, just rotate that around like that but I won't see how that so I can have that there and I could have the camera there you've got your portrait and then you've got the landscape brilliant lens one of the best lens I ever owned this 500 mil. Yeah, make sure it fits into the bayonet. You've got your release for your DSLR there, the, the bayonet part. Make sure that's nice and tight, otherwise you can. I've seen people lose their lenses. I don't sort of worry so much about levelling the tripod as long as it's level enough to be sturdy enough on the, on the ground that I'm working with. I have to put it on an uneven ground, I just lower 
lower one that if it's something there it's in the way I can I can put it so close there I can maneuver it a bit so it's stabilised that way. Yeah, with birds, oh, it's beautiful out here. Got everything. You said, um, this is about deer o'clock now. There's a couple of blackies just flying over the top. This is how you're going to get your excellent footage that it's worth watching. Um, I see so much stuff on YouTube. They spoil it. They, they, you, you, hands free. If you're zooming on a, on a deer, um, you're going to get you're going to get body movement. You're going to your heart. You're going to be excited, so you might have the jitters. By having a tripod, you take all that out of the equation. So just be mindful when you're actually filming. Tripod is the way. Even if you have to carry a little, this this thing weighs bugger all because it's carbon fiber. And this is a, a little knickknack that you're going to learn. Is if it's a wet ground you're on. Um, Good way of keeping your backpack there, and if even if you're um, going a little bit away or you've got another camera set up, it's it's um, it's very sturdy. Not a bad, not a bad. These these tripods are. I've had this tripod for about 12 months now, and uh, so far it's been good. I've got on the other one. I've got a slick, which is a good. Then I've got a Manfrotto, which is too heavy to take in the bush. Um, things I carry when I'm, whether I'm photographing or hunting deer, essential things is naturally in your pack. We'll have a look. Look at the goodie bag. Naturally, you've got gloves. I'll just put this on the ground. Water, essential thing. You go off you know, in dry and middle of summer months or spring months and it's very hot that'll keep you going um, for me I'm getting older reading glasses plastic bag for keep getting things dry these are the remotes for my cameras so, like now going back back to to my vehicle camp, I need a headlight, hand lamp, just something to get me out of walk back if it's too dark. Just a small one. Depends on what you like. I've just got a few um, nut bars, just a couple there, and then I've got this stuff here. It's um. Beautiful eating. It's just meat jerky. Comes in. I've got a little bit of salt, a bit of protein in, so it'll keep the energies up. Perhaps better than um, eating sugary things, you know. So and slight, so you're not putting extra weight. Like probably what other things I'd use. Excuse me. Hmm, it's not. Outback meat jerky. Very nice. Natural, natural protein snack. Just to put in your pack, no weight. And when you do get hungry, depends on how hard you hunt. When I hunt pretty hard. Good and keep out, keep going all day, mate. Hope these tips are benefit to your photography and filming. To do an audio, and I could have deer in front of me or whatever. So what you do is you can talk. It's not going to. A little tip: if if you're do, doing a talk like I am, although I'm talking on them, you can actually turn your microphone around the other way, so it's facing you. So you don't get any distortion or interference from the front, you get it straight to you. So that's, that's another little tip you can do. 
then put the um, the bag on there to stabilise you. Make sure everything's set right hard. Put your day pack there, and that'll stabilise and hold it steady. Steadier than you would if it was just on its own. So there's a couple of little tricks that may help you with your uh, photography and videography. As I say, I see a lot of stuff on YouTube and I'm just sort of being very critical myself, being a photographer, it could be a lot better. Now, um, zooming in and zooming out, it virtually gives me vertigo, but watching it, it sort of just um, spoils the footage because um, what it, all it does is give you the distance from where you are to what the, uh, the object is or the subject. That's all it does. And you can do that in post-processing anyhow. So you maximise your lens, like this here, I can't, I can't zoom on this lens. It's a prime. But I can, I can zoom, use it as a zoom because it's doing, on this camera particular um, lens and that 850, I can do uh, 4K resolution, which is fantastic and the objective lenses are so good that they're much better than what you get out. Um, little birds flying around here. So that gives you a tip. I'm just going to have a look at it. That's another thing you can talk about too is um, ISO. ISO is, well let's say I'll go back to, to the basis. ISO aperture, shutter speed, three components that are essential to, to work where, where you get the correct exposure with your camera. As you say now, it's getting it's getting darker. And um, so what's going to happen to your ISO? You need to bump it up to get more light into it. But, but you sacrifice light for noise, which is the grainy bit in, in photography. Which you don't, it's, you can get a bit, but when you get starts to get too much, it spoils your, your uh, photography. Shutter speed. Blurring and freezing. That's what shutter speed does. Unless you can get people to be perfect, you're still for portrait work. It's fine to go those you know, 125, 250th of a second. But for birds in flight, I crank my shutter speed up to roughly around a minimum of 2,000 and maybe go up to 4,000. Um, and what I do to sort of you can't work your ISO, so I'll put the ISO on auto. So wherever I move it, whether it be going dark or light, the auto ISO will compensate for exposure. So you might get a, in the darker parts of, of if it, say for instance, if a duck was flying through the trees here, there's a good chance that I'm, it's going to bump my ISO up or bump my ISO higher, which will create noise. But once I put it into skylight, um, and definitely with sun, you're going to go the low ISO. So that's what ISO does. Can you can understand, it only takes you a split second to pull the trigger of a rifle, where you, when you're working a camera, there's so many componentry of the camera that you've got to consider. Yeah, okay, um, you've got auto. Fine. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but it doesn't give you that creativity in your in your photography or... Yeah, so, as I say, there's a few guys going on now. They're asking me questions about my photography and how they can improve. Um, watch YouTube. There's a lot, a lot better photographers than even I am that can give you a tip. All you have to... Yeah, there's a plane coming over, back over here. That's how far I'm... As I said, here we are, and um, I'm only three k's from my home, so you know there's vehicles around here. And the mozzies are starting to bite me. So... Gee, I like that. Yeah, that's, that is nice, that. A packet of that will keep you going all day, I reckon. Only thing I'd carry is probably a bit of fruit with me too. Um, another thing you probably should take is a first aid kit with you. I have got a small one there, just a like a band aid kit. Um, and if I get bit by a snake, I've got a little notebook writing right in my wheel out. 
and not far from here, just to the right. I've seen a good cophead the other day, so. But in this grass, you can step in over and just got to be so super careful. One eye front and one on it, and one eye on the ground all the time.